Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about proprioceptors. So proprioception in general is our brain's sense of where the body is in space. So it's our sense of body position um, and where our body is, how it's shaped in relation to our other parts of our body, but also in relation to our surroundings. So things that we might be trying to hold or um, what kind of ground we're standing on. Um, so it gives us a whole sense of where our body is and how it's positioned. So we have sensory receptors located throughout our entire body that are carrying sensory information back to the brain so that the brain can piece together what our body is doing and where we are in space. So proprioceptors are those sensory receptors. Um, so we have lots of different kinds of proprioceptors. We're gonna discuss the three main ones here, but there are more than just what we discuss here. Um, so they primarily detect the amount of muscle contraction, uh, tension on tendons, position of joints, and other characteristics of the body position and movement. So proprioceptors allow estimation of the weight of objects and the force is placed on joints to determine muscular effort necessary to successfully complete a task. So it's like if you pick up a milk carton on the table and you expect it to be full, but you pick it up and find out that it's empty, it's your proprioceptors that are collecting information about that that your brain is interpreting as that carton being empty. So when your brain finds out that the milk carton was empty, it can adapt your motor plan so that you produce the appropriate amount of force when you pick up that carton. Because if you pick it up expecting it to be full, you're going to produce more force than you need if it's empty. And so rather than picking it up and, <laughs> and being out of control with the, with the wrong amount of force, uh, the cerebellum sends um, kind of that error, it sends that difference back to the cerebrum so that we can replan uh, for how much force and which muscles we want to activate to be able to go through that movement correctly. So Golgi tendon organs are one type of proprioceptor. Uh, they're located in the tendons, hence their name, and they are detecting stretch of the tendon caused by contraction of its muscle. Okay, so tendons are at the ends of a muscle and they're attaching between the muscle and the bone. So when a muscle contracts, when it shortens and produces force, it's pulling on the tendons and creating stretch in the tendons, and the tendons are transmitting that force to the bones to cause the movement. So when muscles contract, they stretch the tendons. Golgi tendon organs are detecting the stretch of the tendons, which is interpreted as the amount of contraction of the muscle. So the more muscle contracts, the more it stretches the tendons and triggers the Golgi tendon organs. So when they're activated, they trigger what's called the autogenic inhibition reflex that causes the contracting muscle to relax as a protective mechanism to prevent injury. So auto as in self. So when we activate the GTOs, what that means is the muscle that those uh, tendons are attached to is contracting. So if it's contracting to such a great enough extent that it could damage the tendons because they're being stretched too far or too much force is being applied, um, it can trigger the autogenic inhibition reflex, which is a nervous system response. It's a reflex um, that prevents that muscle from contracting further. It causes relaxation in that muscle so that we have less force so we have less pull on those tendons and it relieves that uh, stress that's being applied to the tendon and protects them from injury. Okay, muscle spindle cells are proprioceptors that are located in skeletal muscle that detect stretch of the muscle belly. So these are interesting because they're both muscle fibers and sensory receptors at the same time. So these are very unique because they're, they're basically like specialized muscle cells that also send back sensory information about the state of stretch of the muscle. Okay, so GTOs were detecting stretch of the tendons. Muscle spindles are detecting stretch of the muscle itself. So proprioceptors located in skeletal muscle that detect stretch of the muscle belly 
uh, constantly collecting sensory data about the length of the muscle and the speed of change of length of the muscle. All right, so they're just constantly, all day, every day, in all of our muscles, sending sensory information to the central nervous system to report on the state of contraction of the muscle. So it's reporting on the length of the muscle fibers and how fast that length is changing. So it's not just how much stretch is happening, but how quickly is that stretch happening? Because if it's happening very quickly, because it's a viscoelastic, there's viscoelastic properties at play here, if it's happening very quickly, the rate of loading will affect how likely that force is, that stretching force, or the tensile stress, is to damage these tissues. So if the stretch of the muscle is extreme or fast, it may cause the muscle to reflexively contract to guard against injury. So that's why in, when we're stretching, we wanna be careful. There are different types of stretching that we can do. And if we're going too extreme or too fast, um, because it's a viscoelastic material, um, we're, it's not going to stretch as well as if we went slower or to a less extreme degree. And because it's not able to stretch as well, we will trigger um, these muscle spindle cells that will trigger a reflex to protect us. Okay, so, um, and meaning a reflex to protect us, like it will cause the muscle to contract to resist the stretch that's happening so that we don't injure the muscle. At the same time, um, that will will cause um, reciprocal inhibition, All right? So reciprocal inhibition, that's neural inhibition of some of the motor units in the antagonist muscle during an action. So essentially, we're trying to guard against co-contraction. So we're saying that when we have our reflex that causes the muscle to contract, we want to at the same time inhibit too much contraction in the opposing muscle that would prevent that muscle from contracting to protect against injury. Okay, so reciprocal inhibition prevents the antagonist muscle from generating too much force relative to the agonist and synergists. Some motor units activate to control the movement, but the nervous system ensures that it is not possible for too many motor units to activate. So we're saying that when we contract, um, like let's say biceps brachii, let's say that we triggered the reflex where the muscle spindle said, we have too much stretch happening here, hurry and contract. And so we have a reflex that causes biceps brachii to contract, to resist the extreme or too fast stretching of the muscle. At the same time, the nervous system will inhibit triceps brachii, which would be opposing that action. So it will inhibit triceps brachii from producing too much force to resist the flexion of the elbow that is going to take place as a result of that overstretch that occurred in the biceps. So proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation is a style of stretching that really capitalizes on all of these different uh, neuromuscular control mechanisms that we're discussing here. Um, so it uses reciprocal inhibition, um, and other uh, neuromuscular factors to improve relaxation in a muscle to allow it to stretch to a greater extent. Uh, so for example, if when you're trying to stretch hamstrings, use different techniques to contract the quadriceps, contracting the quadriceps will cause inhibition of the hamstrings and that inhibition allows the hamstrings to be able to be stretched further without resistance. Okay, joint kinesthetic receptors are a group of different proprioceptors. Um, so there are different kinds. This is just kind of a general category, but there are different kinds within this category um, that are located in synovial joint capsules that collect sensory data about the position and motion of joints. Okay, so these are throughout the body. Actually, we have these in the menisci of the knees. We have them in... Um, ligaments throughout the spine. So we have different kinds of joint kinesthetic receptors throughout the body in many of our different joints. And a lot of them are acting as sort of like force plates um, or they're detecting stretch just like Golgi tendon organs and muscle spindle cells are doing. Um, but they're collecting different types of sensory data 
from our joints. And so it's sending information back about like how much force is going through the knee right now, um, or how much force is causing stretch of this joint capsule, which the brain can interpret as this many degrees of flexion, just as an example. So we're getting all of this information about the stretch and forces and movement happening in the different joints throughout the body, which the brain can then interpret as position. It can, it can interpret how much, like what position different joints are in, and it can interpret how much force is being applied through those joints in those positions. Same way as like when I pick up that milk carton and I can immediately detect if it's, you know, how full it is. Is it totally empty, totally full, somewhere in between? And that's because I can detect the amount of force going through the different joints in my hands and in my whole upper extremity. And my brain interprets those forces and those angles of joints. And then I can interpret and say, this is how heavy or this is how full this milk carton is. And then I can adapt my motor plan accordingly. All right. So that is all I have for you here. And I'll see you for the next one.